Live TV today, I have a special guest, and we are located at 317 South 6th Street in our studio, 317. And this is my honor to interview our Sultan in Mindanao, and we're going to talk about um, many things, the ancestor, Iran, and his project to put together our humanity in the Philippines, not just Philippines, of overall global. So I want to welcome the other than Sultan Thomas Kabili the second. Kumusta po? Hello. <laughs> Kumusta po? Uh, good. Everything is cool about yeah. the discussion earlier and we're going to talk about many things about what's going on in the Philippines mm -hmm. in your project alone. So I want to welcome uh, Sultan Thomas Kabili the second. Welcome to my show. Well, thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, yeah, about uh, Mindanao Miracle, mm -hmm. where you know we're uh, <clears throat> we have a couple of uh, projects that's uh, ongoing in Mindanao, which, uh, as you know well, that uh, the Marawi is now ground zero. Because they took out all the the terrorist uh, you know, inhabitants there, so now we're beginning to rebuild it, you know, into. Uh, so your your I'm so sorry to interrupt you there. So your mission right now is to rebuild the Marawi first. Yes. Okay, and you want to reach out the whole world to collaborate and help to your project, as you as a sultan. So your mission and vision, and to accomplish that, you will like to hand in hand, join hand from other people in ar around the world. Yes, very much so. Because we need to develop it like a township mm -hmm. and uh, give livelihood to the people. As you know, Mindanao is uh, the food basket of uh, Asia. So it's about time to properly develop it so that uh, it's equitable for the people there in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. So what else is your project besides to, uh, to rebuild the Marawi? Uh, first, we, we, we want to uh, invite a big uh, farming or agriculturist uh, uh, who can, uh, you know, transform our land area into future food basket in Asia. Mm. So we're inviting like a joint venture partners to do farming in uh, in our mi northern Mindanao area. Specifically in Lanao. Lanao del Sur. Del Sur area. So, uh, so that we can create livelihood and continue the peace, you know, amongst the people in Mindanao, so that the, you know, the vast land mm. can be productive. Mm. Let me ask you something, uh, since. Mindanao is actually, uh, in mind of people, it's Muslim, correct? So, yes. and also there's a rumors going on that the Mindanao, they want to separate it, but it's not going to happen because, as you know, Philippines is Luzon, Visayas, in Mindanao. I know rumors is rumors. So, and also what I know and I heard is uh, they want or they plan to create their own you know, puzzles. Well, that's just rumors. Well, right now we are under the Bagsamoro form of government. They're already being independent mm -hmm. to the Republic of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The Bagsamoro uh, won the legislative uh, votes from the people to, to be autonomous from the Republic of the Philippines. So now they're they're uh, they're practicing for the next three years. They already 
initiated some form of uh, legislation on their own, like uh, federalism. Okay. So this this form of government is autonomous from the Republic of the Philippines. Mm, and that's already mm. approved. It's it's been approved already, and it's been there for the past three years. Mm. So so the reason for this is because a lot of uh, Middle Eastern investments wants to come into Mindanao. Correct. And uh, they want to deal with their own. Uh, religious group of right. the Muslim, mm -hmm. you know, investing mm -hmm. in the Muslim part of the Mindanao. Okay. And tell me, how could we protect the people, not just the investor, the local people, because we are always known, Mindanao is always, the um, extremists is there. How could you help the government in Mindanao to eliminate the extremists? Do you have that power to collaborate with them to eliminate these extremists? Well, as a model uh, city in Marawi, uh, three three years ago it's been rad eradicated already. The extremists were taken out. That's mm -hmm. why they have to start developing it because it's you know ground zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, the government has. Uh, reserve the area for a base mm. so that no no insurgents are coming in again to Marawi. Mm, correct. So I heard that, uh, well, it's not heard, it's uh, going to happen. Uh, three sector in the Philippines that American is coming back, the military, and part of that is uh, near Mindanao. So that's also going to help the investors because right now I myself, I can't. You know, I'm not gonna jeopardize myself just to visit Mindanao because it's still there. The whole, the you know, uh, mm -hmm. people that are being abducted, people are being killed. You know, so what is the protection that the investors or other people who wants to visit and know about Mindanao? Because I heard Mindanao is so beautiful. Yeah, the, our new president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr has been working hand in hand with the Bagsamoro uh, government now there. Mm. So they've given fair share of their powers. Mm. Because the new Bagsamoro law, uh, half of them are MILF Correct. and MNLF. Correct. And uh, they're now part of the government. So they've given the powers to them. So now they're working hand in hand with the Republic of the Philippines. So you're saying that the any investors or any people around the world who want to visit and see Mindanao, you are saying that it's secured and it's safe for them to travel? Yes, very much so in uh, Marawi and northern Mindanao, where Lanao is, it's mm -hmm. become uh, a popular area. tourist spot, tourist spot correct, now. correct. So that's that's beautiful. Let's talk about the uh, for you. It's not just our country and your and your town Mindanao that all these people are actually uh, they call it uh, stealing land. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the, how you want to help to basically bring them back or get their uh, their land. T yeah. Tell me, uh, where where are you on that situation now? As you can see, right now we're fighting for the uh, Spratly Island that uh, other country they're claiming that's their land. That's because, you know, it's agreed. Uh, t tell me where we at on that one. So you're trying to help them to uh, get their ownership back. Uh, we call it Iran and, and sister in the Philippines, yes. especially in Mindanao. Not just in Mindanao, in other you know, yes. countries. Well, Tell me. Well, uh, basically, the world doesn't know that uh, there is more history than the Spanish regime in mm -hmm. the Philippines. Uh, Spaniards were there 15th century, you know, sometime up to 18th century. Mm -hmm. So, so before that, like the Indians of uh, United States, they were the first ancestors of uh, USA. Mm. 
Amen. So just like in Mindanao, there was this Iranun or the Moro. And uh, they are the ones who lived there on the third century after the ninth century who were there to occupy the, you know, they were the, the original ancestors. And they were the sultans as well that ran the country. Actually, the entire Philippines was uh, under, you know, leadership of Mindanao, not the other way around, that Luzon controlled Mindanao. Before, it was Mindanao who controlled the entire Philippines because we were under the Muslim territory. Wow, that's, that's very uh, educational to me. I never yeah. know that. So you're saying in the past, uh, you know, when the war start and the war end, that Mindanao controlled Philippines and now it's reversible. Yes. So how does it work now? Uh, well, they're, they're starting to work on the federalism form of government. So that means that uh, Mindanao will have their own share to manage their own land. So, so just because in that time they are in control and now, as you said, federalism so that they can actually manage their own land and they can actually work on their own thing yes. without this, no one is controlling them. Yes. This Bagsamoro new form of government is organic to the federalism. Mm. So we need one more step from the Bangsamoro to the federalism. Mm. And that's being practiced now in, uh, in Mindanao. Well, tell me, uh, le let's change the subject. Tell me about the uh, uh, Spratly Island. Mm. Tell me why there's so many countries are claiming that they own, that their land, and especially China, Tell me about why do you think that China is claiming that this is their land? And they actually occupied almost half of it, the entire land. Yes. Actually, uh, as far as the history is concerned, China sees the Spanish time. Uh -huh. Because that's the only history that they can see in the books of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Even the Philippines is named after King Philip. So, so China never knew that there was sultans and prior to Spanish time mm -hmm. that, led, that led Mindanao. The form of government were the sultans before. So that goes as far as 3rd century to the 9th century and onwards. So who actually owned the Spratly Island? Of course, the, in our bloodline, the Iranuns were the pirates during the 3rd and the 9th century. And they were the one transporting people from Vietnam to Taiwan to Palawan to Mindanao. Because uh, China just goes fishing mm. in the West Philippine Sea, Correct. The, which they call the China Sea, Correct. West China Sea. So that doesn't equate of ownership. Correct. Unlike us, the Iranuns, they have the patrimony over the land. Mm. Which so, mm. we, we have a book now that we contributed to the uh, Philippine government about the history of the uh, sultans and Iranuns of Mindanao. Mm. So, China should know and understand that the reason is just the name South China Sea. That doesn't mean that they own the land. So you as a sultan, Iranus, and ancestors is the rightful owner of the Spratly Island. Of course, it's the Philippines because it's one. But then again, this is your ancestor that actually owned the land. Yes. There's uh, 20 islands, mm. actually composed of uh, 20 islands that cover Spratly and Scarborough. Mm. Now they sort of uh, found a way from the back door to occupy the nine, nine islands out of the 20. So, so uh, now they, they came about 
Then the first one was nine dash line, mm -hmm. which uh, will occupy uh, ten out of the twenty mm -hmm. islands. Uh, when they when they occupy eleven, most of the islands, they will apply. Uh, we we see that they will uh, apply for an archipelago, so that they can own all the twenty. Wow. Yeah. So right now, China occupied the eleven islands. Now. You're saying now. Now. They, so for the part we did not know they were already working on the. 11 islands. Correct. Also a barricaded already. Exactly. They barricaded it. Uh -huh. So uh, as the people are watching around the world, uh, once again, this is Sultan Thomas Kabilis II. He is a Sultan now in Mindanao, and he can tell you that the Spratly Island, or 11 islands that occupied by China, they don't own that land. So they're fighting for that. They're fighting it back. As uh, a lot of people around the world that also, uh, the chief of Lakota, uh, they are the seventh tribe. Also, their land has been stolen by American, and that's uh, Black Hills and also the Mount Drasmore. Uh, that's also our series that we're going to talk about. But let's talk about Mindanao first, because the Sultan here is trying to tell you, China, that that's their land and returned it to the rightful owner. So let's continue about that. So you're saying that 11 island that occupied by China is, I, I don't know why we should not be doing that because almost half of our country are owned by China anyway. You got to remember the uh, Philippine Airlines is Chinese Filipino. You know, Jollibee is Chinese Filipino. They're actually 10 billionaire, they're all, all Chinese. So how, how could they have no heart or compassion just because it's greed, correct? Because all of the mine and inside of the Spratly Island or the 11 islands in the Philippines that they already occupied. So yeah, well, there are a couple of reasons that we anticipate why China is making their moves nowadays. Mm -hmm. First, they're about 1.3 billion. And the food that they require mm -hmm. to, to feed all these people plus the tourists and all those uh, people that come to China. Correct. They need the West Philippine Sea fish, uh, you know, marine, uh, marine biology products to, to consume. Correct. So that's number one. Uh, actually, uh, number two is the territorial rights so that they can put their uh, military protection. Because uh, U.S. is already in the Philippines, back in the Philippines, Correct. helping the Filipino. And in Japan, they added about three or four uh, American bases, mm. and in Taiwan. Mm. So what they did lately, they added another dash line. Instead of nine, became ten, now it's eleven. They included Taiwan. That they own Taiwan. I know they're fighting for they're it. They're fighting, also. so yeah, it's good because we're not alone anymore now. Vietnam is fighting China for territorial rights. Taiwan is doing that too. We're doing it for Scarborough. Mm. It's good in a way that they don't include us, the entire Philippine archipelago. Under China. Well, I think I, I think if you uh, if you notice, uh, uh, almost more more likely you go to uh, Manila, it's all China's. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, why do you still want to hurt us if this is you know? I mean, they've been marrying Filipino and they are they are actually the pioneer of other uh, businesses, huge businesses in the Philippines. Yes, I've been talking to, I myself, we have a bloodline of Chinese. My mm -hmm. mother's mm -hmm. ancestors come from China. Mm -hmm. So, and some Spanish blood, mm -hmm. Syrian blood, and mm -hmm. uh, Iranun. When I talk to the other uh, Chinese uh, billionaires in the Philippines, I was asking the same question. question. Why, uh -huh. why do they need to, you know, uh, be part of Philippines, wherein they're already part of 
the economic and the economy of uh, Philippines. Philippines, there. But, correct, correct. But this is between us, you know, uh -huh. the, the Chinese people in uh, Well, it's not going to be between us China. now, this is around the world. Okay, so, uh, uh -huh. they, they are, I got some information mm. that uh, those people that migrated to Taiwan, to Philippines, mm. according to Chinese, you know, the, the pure Chinese in China, they said that these people are traitors to their country. Meaning, they, they migrated, they, they went out illegally, out of China. Mm. So they are not under them. They are somehow like traitors to them. So it's kind of, you know, different. They have a different role for Chinese people living in Philippines, Taiwan. So you're saying, uh, as I read some of their bio, actually, before they become a billionaire, okay, especially also the owner of uh, Jollibee, they are also poor. They migrated to the Philippines because they know Philippines is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's just like we're not communists. So that's the reason why they migrated there and uh, work. And they become successful. They become billionaires. Yes, you're right about it. Why, why they become selfish and greedy just to capture, wants to have this island just because it's greed. Yeah, greed. And further down the road, the third element is that is the main streamline underneath lying the oil reserves are in that area. I know. Yeah. So, and also uh, gas, right? Gas, yeah, oil, natural gas. Natural gas. gas. Uh, and also marine. That, that, let's talk about that. I was so upset and I was not happy when the EBS CBN before that they actually you know, this big boat, you know, the, the tank or whatever, they're trying to scare the Filipino because the Chinese, as you said, you're right, it's food. Yeah, food. Fish. It's food. You see, we're not even in war yet, and we are already wants to be in war because of the food. Yeah. Actually, they're just playing around. It's, uh, what they're after is the 20 islands and then be able to apply for an archipelago and own all of that territory so that they can own the marine and the oh. oil reserves underneath. So, so you're so, saying, yeah. So we're now under dispute. That's why they did not attend the UN UNCLO in uh, United Nations. Uh -huh. Has given us the economic... Uh, you know, uh, share of the territorials to back to the Philippines. We won that UN claw. So, so meaning they did not accept it wow. because they want to maintain uh, disputed islands while they're trying to work on the islands. Wow. So that's what they're, they're stalling for time. You know what, I just become educated just now. You're saying that uh, for them doing this is because if they get the 20 island, they can actually apply for a archipelago to own that they are actually own half of the Philippines. Uh, no, just uh, the, all they need, they don't need the Philippines. They just need the West Philippine Sea because the mainstream of the oil it's in the, and the, marine, the, the marine is, is right uh, there, yeah, right it's there. so rich. Yeah, so very, anyway, very rich. we also had the east, you know, the part of the west, mm -hmm. that left side of the Philippines is all west Philippine Sea wow. and China Sea. But they were saying, anyway, you have the, the eastern part, the other side. So they're the saying, Philippines. give me this, yeah. after all you have the western part, you want because you know yeah. why? They're so smart. They're, they're actually, Chinese are very smart. You know, they can copy anything. And, well, don't get me wrong, uh, some of my product, my clothes are from China. And uh, we don't want to be an enemy or we should care one another. But then again, it's, it's greed because of the foods and the wealth of the uh, South China Sea. 
So I think we are fighting for our rightful uh, land, but then again, hey, I'm greedy. I want this because the food is here. You know, they're protecting their their livelihood. But then again, almost half of the Philippines are Chinese now. You know, there are billion billionaire Chinese Filipino mm. in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, well, there's one who is a pure Filipino, the Villar family. Mm. They're, they're basically Filipino blood, mm. and he's one of the top three billionaires yeah. also. Mm. So he's there into the development business. So there's also quite a few that are, uh, you know, uh, Filipino, but they're all Filipinos because they're, they, they already, you know, uh, born Comparative in the bird, Philippines. Yeah. So. yeah, but some of them are... Uh, you know, grow up in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. they were educated in the Philippines, you know. And, uh, so what's your next step? Well, what mm. can you do, as you said, you want the um, join hand and unite, you know, to uh, one mission, because it's not just Mindanao, it's not just Philippines, that all this people are, it's just a grab land, you know. Yeah. No, we, so we, what's we, your plan? We'd like to work with China because there's a special relationship between the sultans mm. and China during the pre-Spanish time. Mm. There was trading between mm. sultans and uh, China. So we plan to communicate with China and discuss with them without the American superpowers. Correct. Because right now, they also threaten to work with the Philippines because behind the Philippines, they think that the super, a superpower is, you know, it's dictating something. Let me ask you something. I know this is so uh, personal and not personal, and I know uh, this is around the world. What is the rumors going on when uh, the GOM, the former president, that uh, he heard? the Filipinos because he didn't protect the Filipinos. He went behind against Filipinos' rights. I, is that true? That why we allowed the Chinese already built so much that they didn't stop? Mm -hmm. Why we neglected it? From the beginning, why you become neglected? That we know that's a crying of Filipino. Filipinos yeah. are crying about it. Hey, said Mr. President, the Chinese is already there. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. They're killing us. They're taking away our livelihood. Mm -hmm. Why he didn't do nothing? Tell me. Uh, I know it's kind of uh, personal It's kind for of me. personal yes. for me too because uh, I'm also a friend of uh, President Digong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like his policies, the style. You know, yes, I, I, yes, I, don't yeah. get me wrong, I'm so sorry about that. Yes, I like the policy that mm -hmm. he did, that he's actually cleaned the Philippines. Because we were there, we did a humanitarian and medical mission from APAC, and it's so beautiful. It's just like you're walking. But this has nothing to do with that. That's only his right to yeah. do the cleaning of the Philippines so that we can be, you know, I mean, not to worry about walking around. Yeah. So I, I know I'm so sorry. I know you're a friend of him, but uh, that's just a question because that's a question of the, you know, citizen yeah. internation. Well, frankly speaking, I think uh, Duterte is uh, pro-China and uh, against the Americans. Correct. Even when uh, Obama came to the Philippines, he he ignored him. Not only ignored him. You know, he said uh, a bad word yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, F-U-C-K. <laughs> exactly. Correct. So uh, pro right from the start, uh, before he even became the president, he already... He doesn't like America. He doesn't like the Americans. Correct. Because uh, one time he was jokingly telling me mm. he, were, he was denied a visa. No, that's not him. It's Bato. No, oh, no. Bato is not denied for the visa. I think he... Uh, no, when he was young. He when he was young. Oh, he, he, he put the grudge yeah, on his side. He, yeah. he has the grudge until today that he cannot let go. Yeah, the second wife is a nurse. Mm. So he wanted to visit 
the wife. second wife. The in, second wife. In Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And he got denied. He, he got denied. So ever since he never want to step his feet in uh, USA. the USA. Yeah. Until today, I know uh, all the respect, uh, former President Duterte. I really like you a lot for who you are. But then again, why do you did not protect, you know, our countrymen or our citizen or our humanity or our Philippines? How about that? Why did you neglect that? And why did you even not stopping it? And why now that it's so huge? That how could we make that? No. Come back. Yeah. No, actually. Do, do I have to blame him for this, or no, no, who I need to blame? What I, I can't blame because I don't know much mm -hmm. about the history. And as you said, you're educating me now that basically China's China actually top almost eleven, and they want to take twenty so that they can be archipelago. Yeah. I was just being educated today. I admit that. Yeah. No, as far as uh, ex-president Duterte is concerned, uh, he's doing us a favor by being a pro-China. You know why? Because they can really buy Ch Philippines eh, anytime. They can just, you know, bomb, kill us, right? Kill us, you know, in a in a in one second. Of, in one second, right? Correct. So he's doing. He doesn't want to convert Philippines into a big graveyard. So as far as he's concerned... So you're saying, I, 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 don't, I don't agree to this one, the conversation. You're saying we're scared to China. He's scared to China because the China can kill us just, just like that. So that means it's just like, okay, I'm protecting you, Filipinos, mm -hmm. okay? So I have to kiss ass with them because in one click, we're going to be killed. You're saying. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has, they, they're opposite. One is pro-American, which is the current president, and the, the ex-president is mm. pro-China. Mm. So even themselves, they, they have this argument about how to, you know, to, to reverse or to protect our sovereignty. Correct. So... I can see the view of uh, of uh, ex-president Duterte about China and Ferdinand Marcos Jr. also. But the thing here is uh, uh, who is in our neighbor? Correct. Who is our neighbor? Who? Yeah. So, for example, what will U.S. do if that one minute, you know, boom, uh, China bombards us, and then U.S. will still retaliate and bring their arms to the Philippines to protect us. So by the time they do that, we're already gone. We're already dead. We're already dead. So you're saying no matter what, either the American people are protecting us, still if the China really become aggressive to us, they're also killing their own people. Because as I told you, Imagine, go to Manila, Ong Ping, Chang, whatever, you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, if they're going to be harsh like that, so that's not humanity. It's just about greediness. Yeah. Well, China, China never conquered any country, if you go to their history. Mm -hmm. you know, like Taiwan, they should have grabbed Taiwan for the past decade. But they never do. They they took Hong they Kong. They would like to do it, but they will cannot do it because so many countries around the world are are against that. You know, you cannot be like a, a, a how do you call that a bully. So they like to bully the yeah. little people. So you're saying you're saying right. All over the world, the countries are against to that. So that's the reason why they cannot do it, because if they will do that, so other countries will also get mad at them. So they try to bully little people, Taiwan, Philippines, yeah. what else? So you're saying the reason they cannot bully us that much, because a lot of countries are against that. Okay, they're part of German, probably, right? Mm -hmm. 
who else? Who else are that uh, uh, North Korea, right? North Korea, China, Russia. Uh, Russia. Yeah. So no, they're they, all we, friends. We, we are now in the times uh, that uh, this, uh, this uh, elements like Russia, China, India, they're also changing the, the currency. You know, this is a time that uh, there's also other things, other elements mm. that's changing the, the landscape, not only territorial, mm. also economic. All so right. I think it has something to do with all of this. You know, it's, uh, there's some more into it than just territorial. So we come to this century wherein uh, they're going to change, the, they plan to change the U.S. currency mm. as a medium of the world. They have their own currency that they're launching next year. That we will not have to pass through U.S. Uh, well, actually, no matter what, I think U.S. is still powerful uh, currency than any other country. I mean, a lot of people said that uh, U.S. currency will be done later, but that's not, it's not going to happen just like that. Yeah. But anyway, let's talk about your uh, interview to from, uh, CNN Manila. So maybe we can uh, put a little bit uh, commercial with that. Uh, I don't have a right to this, but I have a permission to Sultan to feature the interview of CNN Manila. Let's feature that. Sultan Zimindanao hailing from the Iranun ethnic group are claiming ownership of the disputed Sprati Islands and Scarborough Shoal. How does it strengthen the country's jurisdiction over the West Philippine Sea? Joining us now is Sultan Tomas Kabili and historian Nasser Sharif. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Final Word. Uh, Nasser, let me start off with you. Which evidence reveals the existing historical evidence illustrating the Philippines' jurisdiction over the West Philippine Sea? The existing uh, evidence now is the genealogy and the salsilos of the uh, Iranons and their activities in the South China Sea. Uh, we first found it out in the uh, book uh, written in 1834 by H.G. the uh, uh, Borneo uh, Collection of Histories, and also with our uh, literature, local literature, combined with uh, field works. These are all the uh, evidences that we gathered. But uh, Sultan Tomas, yes, they are in historical books, but is there really evidence, drawings, uh, that really show that we have jurisdiction over the West Philippine Sea? Uh, yes, uh, we, have a, we have a book, and this is a proposal for the government to use. Mm. And there's a map, uh, Carta Indigena, Carta Indigena Philippine, which is now in the Museum of Madrid. Mm. And that showing that Spratly and uh, Scarborough shows are on the Philippine Islands. And well, how old is this map? This Nasser. is the map was taken from a pirate ship, uh, a Moro pirate ship, rather. That's how the uh, Spaniards uh, couched it uh, in 1834 near the water of Sulu Sea. And this is owned by the uh, Iranians, and uh, they use it to uh, navigate uh, the uh, Palawan. Then uh, Sulawan, that is the uh, uh, native name of uh, Spratlis, and then the Pulo Condor. Pulo Condor is from where Baisa Condor, the, uh, the, the matriarchal uh, the, uh, ancestors of the Iranun in Tabuk in Lanao. And uh, Sultan Tomas, uh, how pivotal is this Carta Indigena Filipino map found from the Iranun Moro pirate ship? to the Philippines' claim on the Spratlys. Can this be used as uh, sufficient evidence together with the historical book and the evidence you have in this book to be able to put it forward to the Philippine government to use this as hard evidence when they have diplomatic talks with the Chinese that Spratlys and the Scarborough Show are truly owned by Filipinos? Yeah, we have uh, numerous... Uh uh, proves that uh, Spratly, because the Iranians are the basically the ancestors at the time, ahead of the Chinese uh, traders in uh, 
West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. So these are the proofs that uh, they've been transporting people from uh, Champa. Champa and uh, Philippines and uh, Taiwan Straits. Mm -hmm. So th this history comes as far as the third century. Yes. Yeah, third century. No? From Tabuk. Uh, from Tabuk. Uh, wow, it really has third. deep roots, no? Yes, deep roots, uh, yeah. Nasser and uh, Sultan Tomas. Have you already made this presentation to President Bongbong Marcos? Is he listening to you and to the Iranuns with this evidence? Because in 2016, we already had that arbitral ruling, but the Chinese are not listening. They're not following. Yes, we, we submitted uh, to Malacanang uh, a book of a proposal that we can open a dialogue with China. Mm. Because their, their counter debate with us is that they have the history. And so, we don't have. And we don't have. So this is the history that we can debate about mm -hmm. with them. So, um, mm. Nasser, is China's behavior right now a clear demonstration of deliberate ignorance of Southeast Asian history as they exclude the key islands from the Nine Dash Line? Yes, they have. Uh, the Chinese, Chinese are suspecting that we, do, we cannot come up with any history of the Spratlys Island and the Scarborough Sword. That's why they are very, very confident about it. If you read... Philippine history as it stands now, you won't read anything. You will, you will only read, because most of our history books are about nation building. It started in 19th century. The, so the Chinese are very confident. We can come up with this. And this one, we are putting it up to lay it down before the Chinese that we have a better claim on Spratlys because our ancestors from time immemorial has been transporting goods from Palawan to the Spratlys, which is Sulawan, to Pulo Condor, to Panduranga, which is the Pandrang today, and then to the Vijaya, which is the central Champa. All right, the territorial dispute, uh, uh, Sultan Thomas, uh, uh, continues uh, with the Chinese. Apart from the president, are you also talking to the Department of Foreign Affairs, Secretary Manalo, the Department of National Defense, Secretary Tudoro, to be able to get uh, all of this evidence forward so we can really start a meaningful dialogue with the Chinese? Yes, we are we, uh, trying to make an appointment with the DFA, Ricky Manado, mm. so that uh, we can submit our proposal so he can bring it to the UN uh, General Assembly this General coming September. Uh -huh. And this uh, proposal can be jointly undertaken there. So there's more force into it. And then from there, we can have a dialogue with the Chinese government to to speak about our history compared to their history. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the Chinese will listen? I hope because uh, the Chinese will listen because all the time they are banking on the historical claim. Yes. Uh, whatever we have put up, whatever pirate victory that we have with the United Nations, I mean the arbitration and so forth, they don't listen to it. And they wanted us to have a one-on-one -on -one talk without the other superpowers, I mean, uh, only the Philippines and the Chinese. And I think with what we have laid down on the table, the history of the Iranon, insofar as the South China Sea is concerned, we can have a better dialogue with the Chinese. I think this is the way to go. Muslim historian Nasser Sharif and Sultan Tomas Kabili, thank you so much for the uh, explanation and for joining us on The Final Word. Thank you for having us here. Here now are the top stories in the business matter. The government. All right, we're back, and uh, that's the uh, interview of the Sultan from CNN Philippines. And let's talk about him as a Sultan now, and what he wants to do. The, the legacy of his father, the Sultan of Mindanao. Let's talk about it. Uh, you have the dream, the goal, the mission that you want to accomplish for your people and our people in the Philippines, especially Marawi. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, I'm now uh, semi-retired. Mm. But before I retire, I promised myself to do some work where my father left off. Mm. On his death, uh, he was a senator and a sultan in the 1950s. Mm. So he died with Magsay's president, Roman Magsay, in the plane crash in Cebu. Mm. So he, he was uh, an architect for the, these three pro projects that he was working on. Number one is uh, from Commonwealth, 
He was one of the 23 men who transformed the Philippines back to Republic of the Philippines. Mm. So he's one of the great men in, in, in that history. Because he's a three-term congressman, three-term senator. So he passed the bill to come back to Republic of the Philippines. That's number one, which he delivered mm -hmm. while he was sitting senator. And then the second part, he submitted in 1935 federalism for the Philippine government, Correct. which did not prosper, but now it's been taken up. It passed through Congress, now the Senate is trying to review it. Mm. So somehow I want to, con to contribute my time to, you know, to deliver that form of government for the Philippines, which I think is good for the Philippines. Just like U.S. is, you know, federalism. Correct. Each state has their own revenue, mm. and then they spend their own money in their own city. Correct. So it's not like a one whole piece that someone allots the budget to each city. Sometimes there's some bias there. Mm. You know. And then the third one is the territorial rights, which was not, pro he was working with uh, President Quirino that time. And until today, yeah. it's not done yet. It's not done yet, which that's why I, I launched this uh, uh, with 16 royal houses of uh, sultans in Lanao mm. to claim and get involved in this uh, mess between China and uh, Spratly Island, mm. Scarborough. Mm. So we we are now contributing to the Philippine government, the history book. Mm. There's an Iranian institute uh, that that I have compiled all the history. So I I turn it over mm. to you know the to Malacanang. So you're trying to get the acknowledgement and release it to you so that you guys can get your life back and have the right and everything in Mindanao. Yes, correct. And hopefully we can uh, take it back. Uh, just like the Sultan Kiram, you know, the back uh, in southern part of Zulu, they were successful, you know, uh, winning a case against the Malaysian government Correct. to get back, you know, our Borneo, Sabah area. But that was slightly different because the Brunei king gifted the Borneo Sabah to the Sultan King of uh, Kiram, of Mindanao. Well, the, th the good thing about this is, being as a sultan, you want to unite everyone. And you, you, if possible, you want other countries also to do the same. Yes, he wants to occupy some of these uh, islands of what, mm -hmm. you know, equitable for everyone. Mm -hmm. but somehow compensate us for that. It's the same thing in the U.S., uh, mm. the Indian American, that the government actually also take their land and they're uh, returning it back and they will be compensated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think you're only fair to what you're asking and sending the message to China. And uh, if China can hear us, and they do, I honor the land. And in China, show them our history before Spanish time. So they know we have, because according to their historian, we don't have the history prior to, to, to Spanish time regime, but we have it now. I have the book that they can read so that they know that we are partners long time ago with China, so we can share. Are you good China? <laughs> the Sultan here? He is willing to share, but you guys have to sit down, write uh, uh, a big contract, and make everybody happy, right? Exactly. So what do you think about 
their plan that they don't want to back down? Uh, they're, they're trying to buy time because uh, they want to be under the dispute uh, disputed island so that they can develop. Anyway, they're enjoying mm. the privilege of developing it now. Mm. And then their target is to apply for archipelago prior to us owning mm. it or prior to the own club. Wow. But then again, you already have some people that they got their land back, correct? Some of the uh, Iran and Yeah, in the southern Philippines in Sulu. Mm. They, they, were, got their land. they got their land. And uh, they, 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 they were successful also of getting some uh, uh, payment back. For back they, they rental, get paid back. they were given in uh, 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 judgment yeah. from 180 countries all wow. over the world. Wow! That they should pay Malaysia should pay the Kiram family 14.9 billion euros. Wow! So, so it's just yeah. happening now. It's happening. I was talking to them last week in the Philippines. The wife of the king, uh, Sultan mm. Kiram, mm. and uh, the, of course they have an administrator, which is uh, Sultan Tan, mm. also Kiram, and we've been talking also, and uh, uh, at least they're happy now that there's a judgment, international judgment. And and you alone, uh, that's the one you want to happen. Uh, yeah, with us, you know, if we can work, uh, you know, uh, hand in hand or face working, to face, you know, yeah. working venture, it's like mm -hmm. just going a joint venture anyway. Philippines doesn't have the money to explore, and China has, so we own the land, they can explore joint venture, you know. Well, China, the Sultan here reaching you out if you want to have a face to face conversation. They are willing to have a face-to-face -face conversation with you. So please reach out our Sultan Thomas Kabili II. I think that is a beautiful uh, message out there. So China, you cannot be greedy. I mean, help us help you. Is that what you want? Exactly. We have a long-standing relationship. The Sultans. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in the third, ninth century, they had trading, you know, uh, activities. If there was even a sultan that has a monument in China that was buried there. Wow. And it's up to today, there's a pilgrimage. Of Maybe all they the need sultans. to be educated. Yeah. I, I mean, they need to be educated by you as a sultan and tell them the history. I want to learn more myself. It's very. Yeah. This is very uh, interesting uh, topic that I never know that. Wow, they already captured nineteen island. I mean, eleven islands. Yeah. I never know that until today. And yeah. here you are reaching them out. You know. Please reach out uh, the sultan and have a peace talk with him and. He's, he's open to the conversation. I, I think that's beautiful, you know. I mean, you're willing to work with them. Yeah, very much so. As I said, they had a long time relationship, the mm. sultans mm. and the uh, Chinese uh, uh, people. They had a working relationship. Wow. It's my honor to have our Sultan Thomas Kabilis II and Ariel Live TV, and of course, Ariel and Mark TV here in our studio, 317 South Suki Street here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And honor also to meet, you, to meet your beautiful children and, of course, your beautiful wife. So the mission is there. Uh, if you guys, I know there's a lot of people who wants to reach out to this Sultan today, but. Uh, the moment they are going to spend their family, so give us a uh, email or reach out our uh, network and we can make an appointment uh, whenever he come back again here in the U.S. So 
I thank you for your time for uh, being here with me. I know you were a little bit hungry. I myself, I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> I can I can feel my body. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, shout out to the people around the world, especially Jay. He's watching right now. Jerry, uh, watching right now, and uh, a lot of people. My family are watching also. They want to have a business with the Sultan. When he go back, so I'm going to let you guys reach him out or make an appointment and set up the meeting in Zambala. So they want to do business with you. That some people send a message. And, of course, uh, Mama Rosita Lee, uh, she wants to see you here. I believe um, she'll be here soon. And a lot of people wants to meet uh, the Sultan. Please send us a message. Once again, this is Ariel Live TV, live in our studio, 317 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you so much for watching, and soon we'll be right back again. So thank you, Sultan, for being here. And well, thank you for having me. Thank you for educating uh, the people around the world, including me. You actually educate mm -hmm. me today. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a lot of things to, to learn from what we have. We will continue the history of the Philippines, especially the Sultan land. Once again, thank you.